Hey, you guys. I hope that all is well. Um, I wanted to wear my blessed t-shirt um, on this blessed Sunday. <laughs> um, every day is a blessing. If you woke up, it's a blessed day, so it doesn't matter if it's Sunday or Tuesday. But, um, you guys, I wanted to share, um, you know, for those that might, you know, have the one foot in and one foot out of uh, your time with, you know, with the Lord, you're a little lukewarm. I wanted to just share with you some benefits on, you know, just coming in um, and being completely um, taken over by the Lord, basically. Let him become Lord of your life and not just your Savior. Because, yes, of course, being, you know, God being your Savior is great. But him being your Savior alone is just, you know, it's going to get you, get you in heaven. Yeah, but why not have, like, all the things, like everything that is meant for you when you allow him to be Lord over your life? And what that looks like is, you know, and I think some people, you know, are afraid of re releasing control. Well, one, they may be control freaks. <laughs> Two, um, you might also just be afraid of what that entails. Like, what is God going to expect or want out of you? What is people going to say when they see, you know, this new you, like where God is just kind of taking over? You know, um, will you be shunned by family and friends? And um, these are thoughts that people have that typically can cripple you to where you just rather not go all in with God and kind of stay, you know, um, lukewarm. But um, I, I will tell you, you know, my own personal journey, if um, I had had so many disappointments in life dealing with people um, that I didn't care what people thought. <laughs> I honestly didn't. I was like, you know, when I was, you know, over there playing, you know, with the devil and all his little minions and, you know, thinking that that was the better way of doing things, um, I was still being um, faced with, you know, just people and all of the mess that comes sometimes with people that are wounded, people that are jealous, people that have their own healing that needs to be done. And so after dealing with that for so many years of my life, it was easy for me, personally, just speaking, to give up everything for God and say, take over. Um, I don't even want to drive. I, I just want to sit over here in the passenger seat and enjoy the view and, you know, and look at my nails. <laughs> And because um, that's really where I was at. I was like, and I'm not worried about what people think. I'm not worried about their opinions. And I have had people run from me and I have had people leave. And then I've had God prune the rest of them away. And then I have even had where, you know, someone kind of um, mocked me for, you know, being as they refer to me as a church girl. And, you know, I'm I'm not a church girl. I am a woman of of God. I am that's that's different. I think, you know, there's a negative connotation that comes with church girl. And really, you know, this generation of Christians, God is raising us up bold. He's raising us up where we actually know him by relationship. God is not always meek, soft, and sweet. He is kind, but honey, he, he has a sword and he will slash up some things and he will bring things to an end, abruptly an end. He will resurrect and he will cause to die. Like, and, and, and God forbid, he, you know, he move and take his hand off your life. Well, he is not going to cause you to die at that moment, but the devil will come and just <laughs> take you out. So God is not, you know, this 
as people probably depict him always as a lamb, sweet and, and quiet and, and nice as a lamb. Um, but you need to read the end of the book. <laughs> it don't end like that. So I want to give you seven benefits of having an intimate relationship with the Father. And um, I'm looking down at my tablet. And so one is knowing God as who he is. And by that, I mean a relationship like the God I grew up with, um, which is probably what had me in the wilderness so long. That God was definitely not friendly. That God had um, everything was no, no, no and no. You can't do that. You can't do this. Um, and everything was wrong and was going to cast you down to hell. And God to me then was just um, just a tyrant of a judge sitting high on a throne, damning us to hell more than applauding us to heaven. Um, and I'm just being honest. That's how I kind of grew up. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm drinking kombucha. Um, but that's how I kind of grew up and I viewed God as being like ruling with an iron fist and, you know, it, and that kind of carried with me for a while. I didn't know God as that he was a God that wanted a relationship with me. I didn't know that I could talk to him like this. I didn't know, um, you guys, I didn't know what I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? But um, I I reverence God for his, for being God. You know, I reverence him. I fear him reverentially. I, um, I confide in him. I ask him for wisdom and knowledge. He grants it to me. I talk to him about the things that... Um, are hurting me, that are making me happy, things I want. There's not much I really want, to be honest. Um, but I'm very, I laugh with him. I'm crazy. I, I have little jokes, but of course, in respect. And that is a relationship with God because you're not a surprise. Your thoughts are not even your own thoughts. God already knows those. So you might as well go and say what you're thinking, respectfully. Um, so that's knowing God as who he really is. Um, two, know ourselves as children of God. And by that, God wants to come, wants us to come to him childlike, come to him. And I will tell you, you know, there are times when, um, more times than not, I think I am coming as childlike. I, I know where my... <laughs> My my line of uh, understanding is that I'm like Lord, I don't know how to do that. How you do that? <laughs> I, you know, Lord, I need wisdom. I need revelation. I need honest like help. Um, and I will be honest. You know, it's funny because um, as I started, as my dreams started to develop. I was joking once and I said, I said, Lord, you know, I've never been one to do puzzles. I've never really been one to do a whole lot of like, you know, um, you know, I don't know, just things where you got to kind of decode. <laughs> that was never like something I really um, liked, although I'm very analytical, but the dreams that I have are more in parables. And I'm sometimes sitting there like, I said, Lord, you know, you didn't make me to be trying to decode no parables. That's why I don't even read the King James. I said, I, so then I said, Lord, give me wisdom and understanding. Open my eyes and my ears. Give me a revelation of what it is you are saying to me. Make it clear. <laughs> You guys, you, I did. I had to say all of that. And um, God always comes through for me. And he wants to come through the same with you. Be honest. You know, God knows how he created me. 
it's probably I, I know how to probably decode. I have been doing a great job of, of figuring out my dreams. Um, but it's also um you know, sometimes it's just probably me not being patient and having to think through it. You know, we are sometimes want stuff to come to us like microwave. That's our problem. You know, God's like, this ain't a microwave. Figure it out. Um, three, rest in the confidence that his ways are the best. And um, that right there is just... That's a that's a whole sermon for somebody, right? Like his way is always the best way. And, you know, it's because you don't know five minutes from in front of you. You don't even know what you don't know. That's why God knows. Like if you have a business meeting, God knows what's going to be happening in that business meeting. He knows what those people are plotting or thinking or planning. God may have you pivot and do something different. You don't always understand why trust him just do it and then you will see because he will allow that to unravel and then you'll be able to look back and be like oh i see you because he wants to he wants you to trust him but he's also going to do certain things in your life to earn your trust so that you will relinquish control of your life so that he can move in and um, be your GPS. Four, find purpose, fulfillment, and contentment. And um, contentment, that's a good one right there. Purpose, God's going, God wants you to understand why are you here and what is your purpose. God wants you to know your purpose. And he is, he's going to... Um, lead you into that if you will let go and and you know as cliche as that sounds let go and let god he is going to lead you into um the will and the ways of 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 your life uh, let's see where are we at one two three five um live your life with joy peace and hope so um that definitely is one that we all need because peace and hope is something that, you know, we may take for granted. But until your peace and your hope is being challenged or is, is non-existent in your life, you will find yourself on your knees asking God for hope, praying and asking for peace. And so God, God gives freely to his children. It blesses him to be a blessing to us and you giving him control of your life and doing it from a, a, um, a willing heart is a form of worship back to him. It says, I trust you. I love you. Have your way. And he will do. And then sometimes it's going to look, sometimes what he's going to do is going to be a little rough. <laughs> It's going, it's, going, it's going to be a little bumpy sometimes, but the ultimate direction is going to get you um, to that peace, that joy, that purpose. But along the way, he's going to have to clean you up. He's going to have to refine you. He's going to have to get your heart right. That's the bumpiness. Um, six, prosper in every area of your life. Now, prosper doesn't always mean money, but it also means money. Prosper is just feeling joy and that peace, feeling contentment, feeling like um, you have good relationships. Things are just going well. Like prosper is more than just the tangible. It's not until you don't have um, any tangibles and, and you don't have even people that you realize that, you know, there's no prosperity of any sort in your life. And so God wants to prosper us in every area of our lives. And so key word being every area, family, business, um, you know, in your friendships, financially, all areas. 
Last but not least, number seven. Um, the seven um, one would be fruitful in all of your um, co-laboring with God. I like that word, co-laboring with God. And <clears throat> co-laboring is working jointly with God. So God is telling you to do something. This is the great thing about God and what I've noticed. God gives me an assignment. And he don't always tell me how to work out all the details of how to get the assignment done. He's going to be like, assignment. And it's like, okay. <laughs> you're going to sit back and you're going to be like, now what do I do first? What's second? What's third? How do I? How do I? But trust him with um, some of those details because he knows if he's giving you an assignment that maybe that assignment is going to cost you money more than maybe what you can afford. He may also realize that you don't have um, the right contacts. He's going to cross people in your life. Like that's that co-laboring. Take a step. God will take a step towards you. And now you guys will start walking in sync to fulfill whatever it is that God has created for you to do. These are the seven benefits of having an intimate relationship with the Father. He is your creator. He knew you before even your parents. He is the one that um, developed you in your mother's womb. He gave you an assignment and a purpose before you were even birthed. Now, if you even take a minute to think about that, like God gives you an assignment for your life before you are even born. You're not eating, walking, or doing anything on your own. You already have an assignment that he has given you a purpose. Um, and I think that is so awesome that God um, considers us even before He um, we're born. And that's because we're all connected. And so trust him that if he's given you a certain purpose or a certain assignment, he knows what people are around your life. He knows which ones. And he, he God doesn't always just use saved people. Okay? God will use whoever he needs to use to get to that finished assignment, that finished purpose. And, and that purpose might be a long um, standing purpose. It may not be one and done. God will use and orchestrate whatever movement of people that is necessary. And this is something that in your own strength, in my strength, we cannot do without him. Um, I, I, I'm promising you what God can do in his timing he can do in a month. It may take you six months and more money and um, probably falling out with a few people along the way. That's why having an intimate relationship with God is so highly important because he can help you navigate um, business. He can help you with saving and investing your money. He can help you and you know, even in your relationships, whether it's work, your marriage with your children, like he is God. I don't need to say nothing else. He's just God. He He's the creator. He is, he is everything. He is, <laughs> period. All right, you guys, I'm going to leave you with that. Um, and I hope um, and I pray that if you are lukewarm, if you are one foot in, if you're scared to relinquish your life to God, um, holding on to your life or parts of your life because you don't know how to trust him or if you even want to, um, you will become exhausted. God has created us to need him. Um, why? Like, why would he create us to not need him? Like, like that don't even make sense. So um, all roads should lead you back to your creator. Um, so think about those, those things if you know for a fact that 
One minute you save, the next minute you not. One minute you over here, the next minute you not. If you just going back and forth, back and forth. Um, God does give grace. Here's the here's the scary part. That grace has an expiration period on it. I don't know what it is. Neither do you. Um, so be mindful of that. How how many grace periods have you used? When I tell you that I am extremely thankful that I didn't run out of grace with God, that he came and got me before I ran out of grace. You know, so that's why I was like, yes, take over because I'm liable to mess up and be right back out there if I do this. So do, do what you do. Clean me up, fix me. And I still say that. I am still regularly coming back to the Father saying, deep in my roots in you. So when the wind blows or the, when the rain comes, I don't get washed away. I don't leave you. Like, hold me tight. Like, I'm serious because um, I know the devil has a target on my back and has had one quite some time. <laughs> and I don't want to ever, ever get, now that I know the goodness, like the true goodness of God, now that I have this relationship with God, now that I know really who he is, um, well, you know, you ain't gonna never really know because he's just too, 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 he is just, he is just all things, right? So you're never gonna really know all of him because he is God. But what I do know about him is mind blowing. Like, you guys, I haven't even been walking with the father a whole year yet. Like out here, just like, like out here, just me and him. It hasn't even been, a, when I think about all that he has done in my life in under 12 months, um, it is just, it is mind blowing. And, um, and I'm excited about where we go. You know, I'm like, where are we going next, Lord? <laughs> what are we doing next? What you going to, what like, and it's not that he's necessarily giving me something, but I am seeing such drastic changes, even in, in my heart, in my personality, um, everything, ev everything. And it is not even about the things. It is about what he has done internally with me. And some of what he has done externally with me. The fact that I hear the Holy Spirit, we interact. Um, he gives me revelations. I, I swear, you guys, every time I close my eyes, there is something I'm getting from my, my time, my quiet time, my sleep. And I am thankful for all of it because in... in I think it's been under a year. It's probably right at a year because, you know, I, well, no, I, I don't, I think I was lukewarm at the end of 2022. I was like teeter tottering. I was getting there, but I wasn't all the way over there. But at the top of this new year in January, December, January, um, I, I came over um, completely and it has been nothing but glorious. And um, I want everybody to know about this goodness, the goodness of God. It is nothing like the God that I knew um, growing up. Nothing like that. This this God is, and and in the stories of the Bible, it has just. Um, I could just go on and on. I'm let me end this video. <laughs> but all I can say is, He is good. Surrender to Him. Uh, life is not getting any easier. You need you need to be anchored in God. You need to um, relinquish your life to Him, and He will create a new heart in you, and and definitely um, bless you. And then you know you want to always know what is my purpose? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? God has the answer, and He wants you to know it, and then He wants you to do it. You guys take care of yourselves and um, share this video with anybody that is, you know, one foot in and one foot out that might be blessed by this. And um, 
Have a great one, and I'll see you on the next one.